What is going on, super duper entrepreneurs, leaders, and influencers? It is great to see you all. For those of y'all that are watching live on Facebook or YouTube, thank you all so much for joining us. For those of y'all that are listening to us on our EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast and maybe watching on our YouTube channel, man, welcome. It is great to have you all join us. Also, want to thank you guys, man, so much for all the support, love, and encouragement that you all have provided and shared with us over 2020. We are so excited, man. We, we hit over 20,000 downloads on our podcast, and it's been really fascinating. For those of y'all that are maybe tuning in to our podcast around the world, man, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us. It has been so neat to see all the different countries that have been involved in the EQ for Entrepreneurs' emotional growth journey. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. It has been super duper exciting. I've got my notes here. So if you see me kind of looking away from the camera, that's what I'm doing. Again, for those of y'all that are listening, that will be irrelevant to you guys. Um, if you guys ever need your, you know, either yourself or your company uh, needs any EQ training, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know at info at eqforentrepreneurs.com. All right. To everybody listening, I thank you so much. If you're listening to us online, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, on the radio, wherever it may be, we really appreciate it. And thanks so much. If you are listening to us online, uh, please subscribe to the platform that you're listening to us on. Greatly appreciate that. We're trying to bring the numbers up. We've been doing extremely well so far. And these interviews, as I always say, are with amazing people doing amazing things all over the country and even all over the world. So thanks again for listening. This man, I met him at a conference maybe about a week and a half ago, a week ago, something like that. Time flies when you're having fun. That's what they tell me. And this is Noble Gibbons. He is an amazing man. He's a West Point grad. He's a former U.S. Army guy, and now he's talking about emotional intelligence, which I don't even know anything about, and he's going to go big into that. But if you do want to find more about him, he do, uh, does have a podcast, and we're going to talk about that a little bit as the interview goes on. But just a quick uh, synopsis of what it is and where you can find it. First of all, the most important thing is where you can find it. It is at EQ for entrepreneurs.com again, EQ for entrepreneurs.com. And then his podcast is Apple Podcast. He's got a 5.0 out of five. I mean, you can't get any better than that. A stitcher. Also, you can find him on Spotify. So he's got he's in all the of all the platforms where you need to be. So Noble, sorry for the long introduction, but you got so much to bring to the table. And I greatly appreciate having you on today. It's so exciting. Big Rap Bass, what's up, man? <laughs> it's so big to meet you, Big Rob. Big <laughs> fire breathing Rob. I love That's it. Bro. Right. You know, Noble, when I met you at the conference, you were the only one that really bought the intensity and excitement when you came on the screen. I know we didn't meet in person, but virtually you really brought that excitement to the screen. So it's really great to have you on. And this is a, uh, something that I just found out about uh, as far as, you know, I'm going through, I'll even say it and be honest, I'm kind of going through a mental health issues because of COVID anxiety issues that have been going on for my whole life, but have really taken over at the age of 32 years old, where, you know, we have, as you know, we just brought up COVID, we have jobs that are, you know, people are working from home, people are starting to go back, a lot of people are changing careers. So, it's great to have you on at this time of really for young men and millennials that we're going to be talking to on this podcast. It's a struggle for us, you know, so I'm happy you're coming on. And I do want to talk about this before we dive right into the interview. First things first, you're a military guy, a real strong, tough guy. And people will see that when the screen goes back to you, what made you want to go into an EQ uh, practitioner. I mean, I didn't even know what that was until we met. Yeah, great question, Big Rob. So listen, man, you are not alone. I want to tell you right now, bro, you are not alone. I read articles literally every single day, multiple articles a day from massive publications that there are 
there's a massive percentage of our population of every demographic, you know, baby boomers, Gen X, Gen, you know, the millennials, Gen Z even, that are all struggling with this, with the COVID, with what's happening, you know, that's been happening the past year and some change with COVID. So for, so I just want to let you know, Rob, you're not alone. And there are a lot of people and there's a lot of support, bro, um, available. And so for me, why did I get here? Well, I, I, I would say this. I don't know if you believe in God or not, bro, but I'm going to tell you, this is evidence that there is a God. If Noble Gibbons is teaching emotional intelligence, bro, there is a God in heaven, bro. <laughs> so here's what happens. I grew up emotionally clueless. Most of my life, my, literally 98% of my life, my mom's a four foot 10 little Mexican lady. I call her a Mexican, not a Mexican. You know what I'm saying? And then, then my dad was a big, giant, white guy. But my mom raised me speaking Spanish. So I look like my dad, big, giant, white guy. But I but I can habla. And I can break it down, too. Just drop the beat. You know what I'm saying? You will see the moves. I got more moves than you haul, bro. What? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was, in our house, we'd yell and scream at each other. And then we'd go off into our respective corners of the house and come back and act like nothing ever happened. So... I never learned about conflict resolution. I, I, I only learned how to stuff and avoid my emotions and feelings. I didn't know anything about identifying emotions and feelings. I didn't know how to process them. I didn't know how to manage them. I was a, the, clue, the emotional clue bus, bro, drove by my house, and I just waved. Right? <laughs> In fact, I flipped it off. Like, what? Get out of here, right? Because I had no concept. Then I went to West Point. Mm. Didn't learn about feelings and emotions at West Point. Went into, I was an Airborne Ranger in the 82nd Airborne Division. Didn't learn about feelings and emotions there. Right. Got into business as a serial entrepreneur, been a part of 10, 11 different startup businesses, I've been an entrepreneur for 23 years now, didn't know anything about emotions and feelings then. Two things happened. One, ran into a narcissist. Never, didn't know what a narcissist was, but but I, I found out very quickly, somebody that loves to control and manipulate other people. And I was like, wow, dude, this does not feel good. About the same time, I yelled at my wife, completely unrelated events, yelled at my wife three times in three weeks. And she gave me three things. Number one, don't ever do it again, right? <laughs> number two, you've never done this before, which means number three, you got more issues than Time Magazine. You know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> come on, Big Rob. <laughs> and, so, and so then went to counseling, right? <laughs> my, my counselor was like, bro, let me introduce you to two revolutionary concepts called feelings and emotions. <laughs> and I was like, what? WTF, bro, wear the fajitas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wear the fajitas, bro. Oh this is great. <laughs> so anyway, th that led me on a journey of personal growth. And what happened, bro, is I started to grow and change ridiculously in all these different areas. And I'm like, I had no idea that so much of the junk in my trunk was causing all these other issues and areas of my life to be screwed up. And so as soon as I started to make these changes and transformation, I'm like, babe, I got to start a podcast telling right. other people about my own issues because maybe I can't be the only emotionally clueless guy out there. Yeah. That's how it started. Well, you're talking my language because the way you were brought up seems like some of the way I've been brought up, you know, being Italian, you know, everybody's fighting, yelling, screaming at each other, hate each other and F you and everything in the kitchen sink. And then, you know, like you said, they all go to their separate corners and then we all, you know, it's like it's nothing. So you are totally talking my language. And I know the people when they listen to this are going to really gain a lot from this because I'm sure they're going through. And I know people have written to me that listen to this saying that they want somebody of your caliber on to talk about these issues facing men specifically. Keeping in with this topic. And I asked him this with men. There's a lot of people that and I'm sure you were brought up in the same type of household that said this too, as I was, you got to stuff your feelings down. Don't be a, a puss, suck it up. Yeah. You know, there's people worse than you. There may be, but you know what? They're not struggling. Yeah. Everybody struggles different. So what would you tell men that are living in that kind of environment that, you know, we both grew up in? And that are struggling through this every day because they can't, they don't know where their feelings are. And they're hearing this from their family, their friends, suck it up, be a man. You got to take it, stuff down your feelings. And then all of a sudden they're committing suicide or 
they're doing something insane, like shooting up a place. That's right. Great, great, great question and, and thought, Rob. So, so being in this space now for four years, four or five years now, here's what, what I've learned from my own coaching and counseling that I've received on the receiving end. Yeah. Um, it, it, and also just my own experience too, my own research and everything is that in our Western culture and society, specifically the United States of America and the U S there is a culture, men are socialized to, to not feel, to, yeah. to not identify our emotions. To, so it's not just a, a, a one-off kind of, oh, it's, hey, you're an Italian family and my kind of raised up, you know, kind of pseudo Hispanic family. No, no, this is men in the U.S. We are not trained. I mean, here's the deal. You tell me how many homies do you know, bro, have ever been trained in emotional intelligence, right? Yeah. Do, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so we wonder why there's so much issue. We call it the silent pandemic. We wonder why the silent pandemic is going on in our country right now with domestic abuse going through the roof, with, with suicide going through the roof, with depression going through the roof, with addiction going through the roof, with all these other issues going through the roof. How many of us are trained on how to identify and manage our emotions? And so that's why so many men are on the struggle bus right now is because, in fact, I had two coaching clients this morning. I asked a guy, what are you feeling? He's like, dude, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm feeling, right? And that was me. I didn't even I didn't even know the difference, bro, sometimes between happy and sad, yeah. right? So I was crying. I, I started crying out of nowhere. My wife's having a conversation with me, started crying out of nowhere. My wife's like, dude, what, what, what's wrong? I'm like, I have no idea. She's like, let me just ask you a kindergarten question, right? An emotional kindergarten question, right? Are you happy or sad? I'm like, Babe, I honestly have no idea how I'm even, I, I, I can't even tell you right now. So, and we wonder why we're having a tough time coping and managing and dealing with stress, anxiety, uncertainty, unpredictability, all this stuff. That's why, man, it's, it's kind of the cards we were dealt, but now we got to do better with how we play that hand. But Noble, is this sort of like, and, you know, we go to body image issues. You know, I've taught at schools. I, I did, I taught at a residence life where the kids were staying over there all over the uh, country. Uh, I was dealing with girls and guys. And, you know, a lot of these girls are looking on Instagram. They see in these sexy girls with that are cut up and, and they look amazing. And, you know, I'm attracted to them too. But, you know, I know that a lot of those girls aren't real. We look at the filters. Obviously, this really adapted in the mid-2000s with social media. But even if you go before that and you look at the G.I. Joes, which I want to, you know, kind of get that in with social media. When the G.I. Joes came out in, like, whatever it was, the 60s, the 70s, the action figures, they look like regular human beings like you or I. And as the years go on and in leading into now, they're so jacked up, juiced up. They look like, uh, you know, some kind of, you know, juiced up football player or something like that. So with that said, in the social media society, like I said, with the filtering, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, do you feel like that's really corrupted society where men and women are thinking that they really should be and should look like, different things were than what God really made us to think and, you know, believe in. It's, it's great, great. Another great uh, insight, Robin, but here's my, my two cents, man, is those are symptoms of our own emotional dysfunction. Okay. So if we were healthier emotionally, would we view beauty differently? Would we value different things if we were healthier emotionally? And I'm going to tell you, as someone who's gone through this journey recently, the past four years, and I'm still on this journey, absolutely, bro. I, I value different things because I, I've got a whole different framework now. The way I think is different because I'm healthier emotionally. So yeah. did I value that at one point? Sure. I don't, I don't, I don't value, I value different things now because I'm, I'm healthier. I used to be a people pleaser addict. I, was, yeah. I had a hardcore addiction to people pleasing. Because I'm, I'm probably 95% recovered, man, I, I view, again, I view the world very, very different. So I think that stuff, the G.I. Joe dolls, the, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the social media stuff, those are all symptoms of, 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 you know, our own emotional dysfunction. Is this a sickness, though, in American society that people are really getting those dopamine hits, uh, 
you know, it's almost like a cocaine addict with that, that they, they love, you know, the attention. How many likes can get, I get on a Facebook post? How many likes can I get on my Instagram pitch? If I, you know, use the lighting this way or that way, uh, pornography is going sky high where, you know, men my age and young are watching pornography and they believe how that's, that's really how sex is. That's really how, you know, women want to be treated where that's obviously not the case. So is this a sickness in American society? Do you think this is a Western society or world problem? What do you feel this is? Yeah. Great question, Rob. So, so, um, you know, so, so with many of, so, okay. So are are there addictions around the world? A hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Now, in terms of, you know, how, how other cultures are in terms of, you know, how are they socializing their men? Um, I, I can't, I can't, you know, super speak on, but I know that there are addictions across the world. And I know the world has struggled and been impacted by this COVID. When you lock up social and relational beings right. like humans, us, when you lock up and what do, what do you do in maximum security prison? What's the yeah. worst punishment in maximum Solitary. security prison? Solitary Solitary. confinement. And what have we done to the entire human race the past year and a half? We lock everyone up in in solitary confinement and we wonder why there's so many issues. So it's, it's, it's learning the tools, the emotional management, awareness and management tools so that you can start functioning better and not being emotionally constipated. And so that this, 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 the emotional challenges that we have, we're not we're not because we're, we're emotionally constipated. We're not like doing behavior, like going through addictions and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. What, you know what I'm saying? So um, here's the other thing I like to figure out too. is like, what, 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 how is that addiction serving you? What emo? So yes, I understand the chemical component, but what's the emotional component of that addiction? Why was I addicted to people for most of my life? Why was I addicted to food most of my life. I've lost 50 pounds over the past nine months after a lifelong food addiction. The only reason is because I'm healthier emotionally. So I think that, I don't know if I'd call it a, a disease. I would definitely call it a, a, um, a global, a global crisis, right? The emotional health of, of, of the glow of the world is, is hurting or sucking right now. So being on that emotional roller coaster that I, along with many other listeners, are on, what would you tell them as ways to, you know, get off that roller coaster, find themselves, feel better, and and be the happy young beings that they should be? Great, Rob. Great. So first of all, I want to validate and affirm how you're feeling and what you express. Thank yeah. you for your transparency. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your vulnerability. Uh, thank you for sharing, you know, how you're feeling. And and again, I want to let you know that it's real. That's real, man. You know, feeling anxious and and dizzy and, um, you know, some of the other anxiety and stress maybe over the past few months that you've been feeling, that's real stuff. It's real. And uh, what have have we done for most of our lives is, oh, well, just stuff and avoid it. Oh, I'm just being soft. I'm being weak. No, no, that's, that's, no. Our emotions are signs and signals to inform us of what's going on. So the fact that we would ignore this stuff is not smart. It's not wise for any leader, any person to ignore information, warning signs. If we were just to drive down the road and didn't pay any attention to the stop signs and the, and the, and the stoplights, that's crazy. But right. that's what we're doing emotionally. We're ignoring, we're putting the, we're driving down our emotional highway with our blinders on, not seeing the yellow line, the yellow lights and the, and the red lights and the green lights. And the purpose of emotional intelligence is not necessarily turning this warm, fuzzy kumbaya guy. That's not the end state. The goal is so that we can manage our emotions and not be controlled by our emotions. So here's my quick answer. There's an app called Mood Meter. I, and it's not my app. I don't know whose yeah. app it is. It's cost 99 cents. I recommend folks download it and start using that app because it helps to identify. It's going to do two things. It's going to help you with your self-awareness and it's going to help with self-management because after it asks you how you're feeling, and I literally, when I started using this, I had to 
click on every single square to find out what the emotion even means. Cause I didn't even know what some of these emotions even mean. Right. Then there's a spot for a notes section where you can fill, fill out. So not just what you're feeling, but then why are you feeling that emotion, which is a deeper level of insight, a deeper level of, of reflection that you have to do. And I recommend trying to fill that out three times a day, do it with when you eat, because it's easier to attach a habit with a habit you've already got a new habit, so start a new habit attached to the habit you already got, three times a day, five days a week, and that will begin to slowly increase your self-awareness and also increase some self-management as well. Noble Gibbons here. Again, EQ for Entrepreneurs. Dot com definitely check it out listen to the podcast eq for entrepreneurs apple podcast stitcher and also spotify you know this guy knows his stuff and i'm really happy that we're having him on as we move more into the interview noble i do want to talk about this because you brought this up that you know you were in the military you didn't know a lot about emotions before that and we're all learning this together as a unit listening to this uh, program with that said you talk about giving hugs why did you why do you feel like giving hugs helps you as far as you know being an emotional person in general yeah great that's great <laughs> so I, i'm a one of my yeah, one of my episodes is is a you know i'm a second generation hugger right. and what, what's what's crazy though is i never thought that'd be a big deal until again, you 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 isolate human beings for a year and a half, and bad stuff happens. Right. The power of physical touch. There is boat boatloads of research on the importance of physical touch. Babies, adults, just even so. And you don't have to, if you're not a hugger, that's fine. Because I know some people like, dude, hey, I'm not a hugger. It's not my jam. That's fine, dude. Even just a fist bump, even a handshake, even the old bro. Your bro hug, you know, br hey, bring it in, right? Bring it in, yeah. little bro hug. Just that the physical touch, man, there's there's connection. There is, you know what I'm saying? There's healing. There's there's mm -hmm. catharsis in, in physical touch. Not inappropriate, right? Not we're not talking crazy stuff. Just just that light, casual uh, uh, interaction and physical connection is super, super powerful. Well, I think a lot of people, and maybe people will disagree when they hear this, but I think a lot of men, for a reason, are against hugging because we, we've talked about this throughout the interview because they were brought up not hugging. They were brought up in a not lovable home or that the emotions were like, you know, we spoke about. Well, here's another thing too, Rob. Another dynamic is many men, many men and women too, have been physically abused. Yeah. Right. So for some people, there's a lot of trauma around any kind of, of physical touch. And I and I understand that. Right. I, I, I respect that. I've been molested, you know, before. And so I, I get it, man. I, I understand that that dynamic. And so um, but if you can get yourself to a place where even again, even a fist bump or, or elbow bump or, you know, what I'm saying something like that, I think is there's just a, I think there's a lot of power in that in that human connection the camaraderie between uh, individuals i agree with that 100 percent noble as we're moving toward the end of the podcast i do want to talk about your podcast eq for entrepreneurs so you know we've talked about kind of your life story growing up obviously being in the uh, uh, military rather and i do want to get you on another time to talk about those experiences in general and just how that made you the man you are today but we'll save that for another podcast but uh, going back to today's podcast, what made you want to develop that podcast? Was it because of the situations you grew up with? So for me, I wanted I, I, be, be, you know, loving people. I popped out of the womb, bro, giving everyone high fives, right? I love people. And for me now, before it was unhealthy, an unhealthy attachment to people because, right, I was a people pleaser addict. But now it's a healthy a healthy love of people rather than a needy love for people, very different dynamic. And so for me, I, I love, I love learning and I love sharing. And I, and my goal is I call myself a dirty underwear style of leader. I want people to learn from my failures and shortcomings and, and look, here's all. So I want to start a podcast because I want to share, share my lessons learned from my failures with other people in hopes that other people could learn from my failures and my shortcomings 
and what I've learned from those failures and those shortcomings, because I know the impact and the difference that emotional health and emotional intelligence has had in my life. It's changed every single area of my life, my faith, my finances, my parenting, my marriage, my business, my, my everything. And I'm like, man, I want to share, I want to share this with other people. And, and, and again, from a perspective of, of shortcomings and failure, not from, well, you know, cause I, you know, some people are like, I have a PhD from Harvard in behavioral. I'm, I'm not that guy, right? Tattoos, beard, <laughs> big bald guy. I, I'm not that guy. I'm not, you know, and some people like the PhD mm. from Harvard and not ripping on them, but that's just not mm. my, my angle, right? So I want to just help other people out because check this out. You ready for this? This is money, bro. This is money. Unaddressed emotional issues don't get better over time. Right. Compound. The other side of that is this emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. And I wanted to help heal other people emotionally. So can you tell people in depth what you kind of discuss on the podcast in general? Sure. So it's called EQ for Entrepreneurs. We're going to go through a rebrand actually because mm -hmm. EQ, we just started that because I didn't know what else to start it as. You know, I didn't know how it was going to impact. I didn't know how it was going to hit. And EQs for everybody. Emotional health and emotional intelligence is for everybody. But I also wanted to make to be unique to me also as who I am, right? So we're going to transition to eqgangster.com. What? Come on, Big Rob! Come on, man! So that's what we're going to be, be rebranding it towards. But we talk about everything, man, right? We talk about how it impacts every single area of life, every area. I just did an episode on sex recently and how EQ has impacted our, our sex life, how EQ impacts the imposter syndrome, how EQ has impacted my financial decisions, how EQ has impacted my fitness, how EQ has impacted my faith. Bro, name the, the, the area of life and emotional intelligence touches it in some form or fashion because we can't make any decision without it going through the emotion center of our brain before it ever gets to our logic center of our brain. So we talk about everything, bro. So for people that are just hearing about the podcast, when you talk about the show, are you bringing guests on from, you know, whether it's faith or sexual issues and talking about how the emotions kind of changed you and, you know, how you've, uh, they've changed maybe the person that's the guest? Is that how the so show is? Go ahead. It, it, it's a combination. So it's probably, it's probably 80, 20, 80% 80 okay. of the episodes are solo, right? Where it's just me sharing my insights and lessons learned. Sure. And about 20 to 30% of the, of the, of the episodes are interviews of me interviewing people that I've, I know or have come across or have met that have also been impacted or are implementing and applying emotional intelligence tools in their life or their businesses. So I know you do this show with your wife, and that's going to lead this into the audience questions. How would she say that you've changed throughout your journey? <laughs> Big Rob, <man. laughs> that's an excellent question. Uh, that's an excellent question. So, uh, again, like I, I, I can't even think of an area of my life that has not changed as a result. So I, I'm a much you know, I'm a much healthier version, emotionally healthier version of, of me. So I'm, which means I'm a better version of me. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better parent. I'm a better entrepreneur. I'm a better businessman. I'm more authentic. I'm more genuine. I'm not trying to people please people anymore. I don't care. Haters, great. Love them. People that get like me, you know, great. Love them. But positive feedback and negative feedback used to it used to be my identity because I was a people pleaser addict on a scale from one to 10, the, the, like uh, uh, someone that would, would praise me or give me some kudos. Oh man. I, I fed off of it. Oh, right. oh man, Rob. Oh, thank you so much, bro. Oh my gosh. Right. And I'm like, Oh man, Rob likes me. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. Oh, he made my day, my week. And, and, and conversely, a hater would crush my soul. Right. It would crush my soul, bro. But now that I'm healthier emotionally, if someone gives me positive feedback, hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that. But it doesn't, it's not who I am. Your feedback is not who I am. If someone hates me, you Rob says, dude, you suck like a Kirby vacuum. Dude, that's super cool, bro. It does, it's not who I am, right? It doesn't, you don't define me, bro. 
I know, you know what I'm saying? I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how, how did you get past that? Cause a lot of people are like that. And I feel like everybody can say, you know, don't let it get to you or don't let that uh, ruin your day. Or you just got to calm down, you know, you breathe and all these other things. I know that's not so much to people pleasing, but you know, anxiety, people say, just breathe. Uh, you got to get past it. Uh, if you're a people person, don't let it, you know, get you upset, you know? So how did all, how did you get past all that? Did it take a long time? How did all that go? Yeah, great question. So I'm working on a book right now called okay. What I Wish I Had Known Before I Started My Emotional Growth Journey, right? Because I, I, you know, I wish there's so many different things that I wish I had known before I started my journey. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to share a bunch of that stuff in my book. But but one of those things is, is yeah, look, so the thing is, and I'm trying to make emotional growth and emotional intelligence, you know, fun and right. worthwhile and purposeful not this, oh my gosh, this sucks and oh, it's brutal and oh, it's for the women, it's not for the men. And dude, it's for every, it's for yeah. Lottie Dottie, everybody, man. It's for everybody, right? And so it, it does take time. It does take time and it takes intention. That's one of my tattoos, man, is intentional. You got to be intentional. It's not, oh, hey, I went to the gym once, so I'm in shape. No, dude, you're still fat, bro. You still got to lose weight. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing with emotional growth. You can't just, you know, read one a book on emotions or, or listen to one right. podcast on emotions. All of a sudden, you're emotionally healed. No, bro, there's some work that you got to do. But give yourself grace and patience in the process of growing emotionally because it's new for most people. This whole journey is new. You know what I'm saying? Well, Noble, I think it's also, you said give patience, but the th thing is now everything is so instant snap of your fingers. You go to McDonald's, it's drive through instant snap of your fingers. Social media, you know, instant snap of your fingers. If I want to contact somebody from Ireland or Mexico, or wherever it may be, you just call them up on the phone and, and it's instant or video chat, or whatever it may be. So our society is so geared to that, and this is for people that are growing up, you know, that are younger than me, that are in the 18, 19, 20 range, but people that are in the 25 to 30 some odd range. They're so used to that technology now that it's really gotten, got hard to say, you got to calm down, you got to relax, you got to put in that work. It's going to take a while. You're not going to be lickety split instantly, uh, you know, successful, instantly uh, feel better about, you know, your anxiety. So how would you, as we end the interview, how would you tell people that are in my age bracket or younger that, you know, this stuff, as far as your feelings, you're not going to understand them in some lickety split instant uh, way. It's, it's a process. It's, yeah. it's a very intentional process that you go through and you grow through but it's, again, it's not something that you pull out one day and then you put back in. And like, this is something that if you really want to get emotionally healthy, and in my opinion, reach your full potential and who God's called you to be, dude, you got to get healthy emotionally. And it's so, I wish I had started this journey, bro, when I was your age. When I was a younger guy, the whole trajectory of my life would be so different right now if I had started working on this stuff and getting emotionally healthier at your age versus, yeah. you know, at my age. So it's, it's, it's worth it though. This journey and you are worth it. And don't forget, as you get healthier emotionally, you are going to impact positively everyone else around you because you're healthier emotionally yourself, right? Emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. So think about how big Rob's sphere of influence is how big your social capital is it's insane right so the healthier you get emotionally bro think about how many people are going to get impacted positive way because you're healing yourself in a positive way and taking ownership not blaming not no no, no taking ownership okay this is where i'm at okay got it i'm cool with it now let's start working on it let's start working on it and just giving yourself a long-term plan don't have this expectation that okay hey by the end of the week man i'll be healed emotionally no, no, no. Give yourself, this may take months and years of healing for people and that's okay. And you are worth that journey. I guess I'll start off the last audience question like this. We all have 
uh, bad bosses. We all have spouses or, you know, are dating someone that we may get angry with. Uh, co-worker that gives us a lot of trouble. So when you're dealing with these certain people that are involved in our lives daily, whether it's you could be living with somebody or you could be working with this person every day of the week, you're going to be seeing these people and they could be bringing that negative energy toward you. How do you, would you react to that person? Ooh, great, great question. So for me, that's an excellent question. So two, two ways I would say. Number one is the first thing is I would understand that it's, it's, it's probably not because of me. Yeah. So not take it personal. Because before I would not do that. When I was emotionally unhealthy, and if you came up on me with this bad attitude, toxic attitude, I'd want to grill a stomp you right away. Let's go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smoke you, Rob, like a cheap cigar, bro. Like Swisher Sweets, bro. I'm gonna smoke you like Swisher Sweets, bro. You know what I'm saying? And so, so that's when I was emotionally unhealthy. But now, so number one, Rob's upset when he showed up on the scene. Okay, that's not. It's not me. So number two, knowing that it's not me, how can I help Rob? Maybe understand and discover why he's feeling what he's feeling. Mm. So now I'm coming at it from a solution, helping coming alongside. And the third thing is I want to validate and affirm whatever emotions you are feeling. I didn't say agree with, I don't have to agree with them, but validate and affirm those emotions that you're feeling. And as soon as I do that, how do I do that by active listening? Hey, hey, Rob, man, whoa, hey, bro. Hey, man, I'm kind of feeling like maybe you're a little upset right now. You know, my, I don't want to misread anything. But I feel I feel like you're a little upset right now. Uh, um, how, how are you feeling, bro? And like genuinely mean it, right? So then I then I hear you, dude, Rob. I just want to tell you that if 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 that had happened to me, I'd be feeling the exact same way. I would yeah. feel frustrated. I would feel upset. And because check this out, you ready for this, Big Rob? When you feel heard and understood, what impact does that have on you? Yeah, well, you, you're going to feel, yeah, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel like somebody's on your side, on your team, yeah. Boom. That's the power of those three steps right there. Mm -hmm. When someone's all amped and, 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 you know, kind of in this negative energy or whatever, you do those three things, bro, and there's a very good chance you can kind of help to deconflict and, and destimulate that person to get them in a more calm state so they can have more open kind of conversation and communication. Well, I'll tell you what, Noble, I learned a lot from this interview and I'm looking forward to our next one. And I think it's really incredible what you're doing. Someone that's came from your background, being in the military, really talking to people that on this show are millennials, but, you know, people that are of all different ages in your business of trying to get them to know what their emotions are and how to fix them. Because a lot of people are struggling with mental health right now, but even before uh, the COVID crisis, there was a lot of struggling. And it's a lot of society that's really uh, boggling down these people mentally. And uh, I didn't get your opinion on this, but I'm gonna finish the interview and then I'll ask you off the air. But again, for people that were listening, uh, just started listening to find out more about Noble Gibbons. Again, Noble Gibbons, EQ for entrepreneurs.com. The podcast is on Spotify. It's on uh, Stitcher and also Apple Music. So definitely check it out. Uh, Apple Podcasts, sorry. <laughs> I get confused sometimes. So again, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify, EQ for entrepreneurs, uh, Noble Gibbons. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you, Big Rob.